All of us are in this together. We're all in this together. Anger is growing over a controversial decision to award Victorian politicians a pay rise as many small businesses struggle to recover from 15 months plagued by lockdowns. Queensland's politicians will be getting a pay rise. We just can't believe how disconnected the MPs are. The fair thing would be would have been to take a pay cut. We're probably losing something like 25,000 jobs a week. It is abundantly clear that we are not all in this together. Boom sugar look at ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters around the world. It is your boy Chris Shule, aka the esoteric noetic, aka the chocolate Nubian so brother from Ghana, West Africa. Dropping the wisdomatic troop bombs here in Melbourne, Australia, the home of the new world order, mate. Home of Team Meh. <laughs> Be sure to like the video, subscribe, click on the bell, tell your friends, tell your mum, drop us some comments, buy us a coffee, and stay tuned by checking us out on Telegram. Oh, all right. So we got some good news. Ladies and gentlemen, it seems that people are waking up all around the world, particularly in Denmark. I salute the Danes. So check this out. You ready for it? Oh. Denmark abolishes all boom shakalaka measures. The Danish parliament recently decided in Copenhagen that all corona measures should be ended from October 1st. There will therefore no longer be a mass requirement and the test regime will be abolished. The Danes will then no longer have to provide evidence of whether they are boom shakalaka or unboom shakalaka or whether they have tested positive or negative. In your face, New World Order. Uh, all corona measures are being lifted in view of the increasing incidence figures in Denmark, reported RT Dutch. You got to give it to the Dutch. You got to give it to the, the Danes, the Swedes. They are really standing their ground when it comes to this stuff. Last year, uh, I think it was in Denmark, or maybe it was, uh, it was Amsterdam, one of these countries. Uh, their government had decided to... Uh, implement mandatory boom shakalakas, but because of the, the protests, because of these people standing their ground, this was overturned. So it just goes to show that one, these protests can and do work. I must confess, I have often said that, oh, look, these protests are not doing much other than inspiring people, bringing about solidarity, but they do actually change what goes on in government. I mean, the authorities do fear what happens when people unite? Because there is a silent majority out there. There is a tidal wave of people that are not in line with these mandates. And these people are waking up. They're waking up to find that there are many that are asleep and they are striving to wake those that are asleep. And if enough of us decide to wake everyone up, if one person decides to just focus on two people in their life, and those two people decide to focus on two people, so on and so forth. Before you know it, we have a tidal wave of change. A tidal wave of people waking up. You wake up the sleeping giant. And that is what is going on in Denmark. And that is what can happen all around the world. In France. In the United States. In Canada. Even in Australia, mate. Now, in other news, <sighs> I thought it'd be worth mentioning that we have a rally coming up uh, this Saturday. Now, I am in no way inviting people to come to this rally because, well, last time I checked, um, the government doesn't want us doing that. And of course, all I always do is I'm told because I'm on team. Meh. <laughs> Hell no. I am not going along with any of this kind of stuff. We want to know why? Because it's illegal and it's unlawful. And just because it's being implemented by these cronies, these governmentalists, it doesn't make it right. Just because some person wearing a badge tells you it's okay to force you to do something doesn't make it right. It's not how it works. The rights of man are not determined by the generosity of the state. They're not determined by 51%. They are determined by God. Self-ownership. Unalienable rights. These are fundamental principles that have been enshrined within the Constitution. And even though they have been obfuscated, over the years, even though we have had these Orwellian douchebags circumvent these laws, these constitutional rights, 
and try to make you believe, try to make us believe that we have no rights. We have our rights. We own ourselves. We believe in freedom. At least I do. Do you believe in freedom? I hope you do. If you don't, probably don't want to be on this channel. <laughs> this is taking place uh, on Saturday, 2 p.m. at the C Melbourne CBD. And uh, you might be asking yourself why you should come to this. I mean, perhaps you've been asleep. Perhaps you're not following what's been going on in terms of the lockdowns. Or perhaps you've missed the recent news that just uh, was announced yesterday in Melbourne, Australia, where Daniel Andrews has decided to announce um, another curfew that we are currently uh, undergoing. Another curfew. <laughs> Here we are, 2021, where people have been locked in their homes and told that they can't leave during certain times. This is the insanity of the situation. 50 years ago, leaders like this, rulers like this, would have been laughed out of parliament. They would have been dragged into the center town hall and beaten the shit out of. Of course, I'm not advocating that we do that to them, but it just shows how far we've fallen from the respect of actual law. But now we work under this idea of, oh, look, mate, oh, it's necessary, oh, it's proportionate, and... Uh, this is where we are. So Melbourne's curfew returns as COVID lockdown is extended again by two weeks. So we've now had the lockdowns extended by two weeks. It doesn't seem as if they're working, right? I mean, I, I, I'm no scientist here, but it seems that we've been implementing these lockdowns, but we've only been extending them and extending them and adding more and more restrictions. I mean, one would almost think that they're not working. But of course, what do I know? But the question is, what next? That should be on your mind. Not what would happen to you, not what will happen to you if you uh, don't go along with this, but what will happen to you if you do, if you continue acquiescing to this and you give these Orwellian dictators the idea that they can do whatever they want without any resistance. I mean, what next are they going to are they going to bring in the the police? Oh, they've already done that. The the military to make sure that you stay at home bring them in into your house to search your premises to make sure that you're not disseminating any anti-waxer material? Are they going to forcibly inject you? And then are you going to say, oh, look, mate, it's the law. You've got to do what you're told and have no regard for actual law, like the actual natural law, natural rights, which the Constitution was supposed to respect? Or are you just going to start, are you going to start listening to your rulers like Daniel Andrews and ScoMo and these... Uh, these are uh, traitors. <laughs> now, uh, a nightly curfew will return to Melbourne and playgrounds, according to this article. And playground, playgrounds will close after a warring weekend of disregard for the stay-at-home orders sparked a tightening of lockdown rules. What do you mean? How do you know? How do these people know that people are disregarding this stuff? How do you know that? Are you assuming that that's the case because we're, we're seeing more cases? Well, that's a, that's a pretty bold statement. I mean, where, where is your evidence that people are disregarding this stuff? <laughs> but they're just a, a boldly claiming that and saying because of that, we need to add more lockdowns, more curfews, more restrictions. On Monday, Victorian Premier Daniel Andrews said the lockdown would be extended by a further two weeks as there are too many unknown cases being recorded. And it is it's the second time the current lockdown is being extended and it is now set to end at 11.59 p.m. on September 2nd. Of course, we know that means nothing because they can extend it again, just like with all of the laws, just like with pretty much everything that's going on now. Nothing is objective. Nothing means anything because fundamentally these guys can always pull out, oh, look, um, I think we should extend it. We're going to extend it because uh, uh, there are more cases. You can't rely on these guys. And they'll just claim that the science is showing that we need to extend it. There's basically no objective law anymore. And what's interesting is when we actually put these uh, curfews into place last year, this was the first time I think we'd done this um, in at least a long time uh, in Australia, to my knowledge, Daniel Andrews was actually taken to court. Uh, the Andrews government was taken to court. And what's interesting is that the court found that the controversial curfew was legal and dismissed the case against the Andrews government. What's interesting is the, a Supreme Court judge ruled the controversial curfew policy that restricted Victorians to their homes from 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. during the state's lockdown was legal, dismissing the case against the Andrews government. Michelle Loilo, an aspiring Liberal Party MP, filed a lawsuit, this is on September 14th, against the former Deputy Public Health Command 
Commander Michelle Giles, claiming the curfew was unreasonable, disproportionate, and violated the human rights of millions of Victorians. I would have just stuck to the, the latter. That's all that matters. But apparently this pro proportionality argument is now something like a, 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 a fundamental point in the law. And all it really allows is the, the government to justify anything. Because when you subscribe to this idea, when you subscribe to this idea, you're saying that despite something being unlawful, well, uh, a, a judge can essentially override it because of his subjective will. And that it, you're just giving these people the power to do anything they want. It's like playing chess with a four-year-old, and anytime he's losing, he's saying, Oh, well, I, th I think it's proportionate that I don't listen to any of the rules, and I just do what I want. This is fundamentally what is taking place. So the Supreme Court judge, Tin Jian, said Miss Loyola's claim failed on all three grounds that Dr. Giles acted at the behest of Premier Daniel Andrews when she extended the curfew, that it was un unreasonable or disproportionate, and that her human rights were unlawfully restricted by the policy. The government indicated its intentions to seek a cost order against the applicant. So this is what happens to people that take on the government now, which, by the way, is completely corrupt. I mean, think about this. The Supreme Court justice is basically saying that the government has a right to lock you up in your homes and prevent you from leaving and saying that, look, it's not a violation of your human rights. They've completely obfuscated the very definition of human rights, dealing with actual individual rights, freedom of movement, freedom to not be aggressed. And now we're saying, oh, well, look, because we think it's proportionate, because we think it's necessary, because it's in the interest of safety, all of this stuff is necessary. Well, one has to ask, what is not proportionate? If the government decides to come into my home and rape me, under the interests of the greater good? Is that proportionate? And when you subscribe to this, this whole attitude of proportionality, of law being defined by the will of the tyrant, as opposed to, indi uh, as opposed to uh, actual natural justice dealing with individual rights, you can justify anything. And this is what we are seeing take place. The police, the government, all of these pieces of this system are working under this completely obfuscated notion that they can do anything they want because in their mind it's justified. And all of you are trying to argue with them, claiming that the science is not valid and so forth, when fundamentally they're going to ignore all, this, all of that. Because fundamentally these people are, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it, they're evil. They're, activate, they're advocating the things that are fundamentally immoral. And they're doing it. Granted, a lot of them are claiming that it's the, it's the necessary thing to do. Their actions are absolutely immoral. I don't care if it's enshrined within some new legislation that it's okay for them to do that. It's like me saying, oh, well, look, I give myself the authority to uh, break into anyone's home and uh, rape them because it's a public health and safety measure. It doesn't make it right. That's not how the law works. But if I, it, it seems, though, that this is the way the law works according to these supreme justices according to the popo ladies and gentlemen i need remind you that if you continue to play this game you're going to find yourself in a situation where you have no rights no freedom by all means understand the legal system understand how to challenge these people but make yourself aware of your real rights Realize that fundamentally, you cannot be forced to sacrifice yourself like that. You cannot be forced to take a boom shakalaka or do anything that compromises yourself. Just because someone tells you to do so doesn't make it right. If we buy into that, then all the horrible things that governments have done in the past, like forcing people to hunt runaway slaves, by forcing people to essentially perform experiments on people. We've been here before all in the interest of safety is acceptable. And of course, all of these caveats people like to put in that all of the times are different now, Chris Jewell. This thing's really serious. Millions of people are dying. And uh, look, uh, you're just being selfish. <laughs> Apparently that's justified. Ladies and gentlemen, the ends do not justify the means. That's not how law works. And granted, we are living in a system that seems to have disregarded that. You can take it to the bank. It is unbelievably, unequivocally, unassailably, unlawful and immoral for the government to be locking you in your homes, applying curfews, forcing you, coercing you to undertake 
experimental boom shakalakas, wear masks that may be compromising your health, so on and so forth. And unless enough people decide to say nay, actually unite, like what has taken place in Denmark, in Sweden. Actually, I think Sweden was fortunate enough to have someone that was uh, a bit more clued up in regards to the science. Let's just say that. But unless people take it upon themselves to actually resist the tyranny, this stuff is going to continue. Unless people decide to stop going ahead with the lockdowns, with the restrictions, with the testing. And look, I, I'm guilty as well. I mean, there, I, I, there are times I, I got to get tested, you know. But fundamentally, uh, we all have to take it upon ourselves to realize that if we want to see an end to this thing, we all have to do our part. Remove ourselves from, from this stuff. And uh, realize that unless, of course, enough of us collectively... Simply just say no. Sim say no. Say no to all the experimental nonsense that is going on. It's just going to continue going on and on and on. That being said, I'm not telling anyone to do anything. Look, if people want to stay in their homes because they're scared, if people want to get tested, if people want to wear a mask, if people want to take a boom shakalaka, they have every right to. But that being said, it is going to likely continue if we go, go ahead doing this. But also... If you're willing to coerce people into doing this kind of stuff, there is a special place in hell for you. Mwah! <laughs> Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, be sure to like this video, subscribe, tell your mom, tell your friends, drop us some comments, buy us a coffee if you feel so inclined, check us out on Telegram, and remember that there are three things that cannot remain hidden for long. The sun, the moon, and the wisdomatic truth bombs of your chocolate Nubian. Ow! What is liberty? What the? Who says you can't build muscle on a vegan diet? <laughs> What's it like being a, a hottie in the vegan community? <laughs> there are no political solutions, only technological ones. The economics of the system don't allow multiple competing systems to survive. Engineering, technology, these arts of humanity, they are magic.